the book of Joshua chapter 5, and I'll talk a little bit more after I read my, this verse of scripture. Uh, verse 13 is where I'll start reading. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us or for our adversaries? Just because the Lord showed up doesn't mean he's on your side. Verse 14. So he said, no, he said, no. But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face, showing humility, showing homage to the, uh, to the earth and worship. And said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's armor said to Joshua, take your sandals off of your foot. For the place where you stand is holy. Look at your neighbor, tell him you're on holy ground. And Joshua did so. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for this place that has been dedicated to you over and over again. Father, the carpet that they stand on, the concrete that they stand on, the material of the, the seats that they would sit on and all, everything about this place is holy because we gave it back to you. It was not our ability to make it holy. We gave it back to a holy God. Therefore, when a holy God takes upon a place, that place becomes that that is holy. So we thank you and we bless you today that in this arena we minister the holy word of God is not just a message it's not just inspirational preaching it is the word of God the holy word of God so we thank you God that everything that's in the atmosphere is subject to your voice subject to your word father the only thing that can be omitted today is religion let it go straight over religion and hit somebody's soul and wake them up for perpetual victory in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Go ahead and take your seats. My title of my message is Buying the Regional Strongman. Some of this information that I'll share today uh, will be not what some of you have heard before because most people don't know how to build a church. It said, build my church, build my church. When you start talking about building a church, you never build a church without opening up an atmosphere. When, they, when uh, Jacob was there, and he had made a pillow and he said when he went to sleep he said angels was ascending and descending and he called the place Bethel which means the house of God you should never build the house of God where God's presence is not available when we got ready to purchase a building, we had grown out of the building that we were in. We were growing so rapidly, and the Lord told me I could not move beyond the certain perimeters. I could not be in necessarily Roebuck, so I had to find a facility between where I was and, and this place, and we, were, we came right here on this line because God wouldn't allow me uh, to go past this area because this is where he was going to operate, manifest himself, grow, expand, and give it a debt-free auditorium if I had gone after something that was offered to me there was a building further down where God told me not to go they offered it to me told me they were going to give me a really good deal but I could not take it because that's not what God told me to I stay within the boundaries of where God told me to be and therefore I have not lost a battle that I fought in the place where he wanted me to be I am not foreign I am not off base I am right where he wants me to be my mind is always clear and I'm always consistent with my messages on where I'm going. I never deviate. I don't preach the Holy Spirit and then, then come back the next week and say the Holy Spirit doesn't exist. I don't preach tithing and then come back and say tithing doesn't exist. I don't say anything about first fruit and then come back and say first fruits are over. All of that stuff is still intact and it's been intact for a very long time. So you can track me and see the consistency because I'm always where God wants me to be and I don't have close friends to me that can can get in my mind and teach me something that doesn't line up with the destiny that I have and you don't have to say apostle needs to watch out who he's hanging with I don't hang with anybody but my wife nobody's on my agenda um, on my uh, planning uh, my weekly planning as consistent as my wife is 
so we're dealing with an issue here. And as we deal with this issue, God, God's leader who has come after Moses is now on the scenes and he walks up to Jericho. And when he walks up to Jericho, he walks into a wall. Some of you have problems with walking into a wall, but those of you who are facing a wall, you need to see who's standing close to the wall. Anytime you're facing a wall, the Lord somewhere, if he led you to that wall. Now, whether or not you're going to listen to him while you're at that wall is going to determine what happens next beyond that wall. So Joshua gets to the wall. When Joshua gets to the wall, he looks opposite of himself and he sees the commander of the Lord, uh, Lord's army standing opposite him. His sword is drawn. So that meant he meant business. The worst thing that can happen is God mean business and you not. When God's ready to do something, it doesn't matter. You don't have time to call a babysitter. You don't have time to get some excuse from somewhere. When God's ready to do something, you got to be ready to do. The sword was drawn. That's making a statement. He didn't have his sword drawn just because he wanted to hold it in his hand. He had his sword drawn because there was something that he wanted to take down. And he was trying to find out if he could find anybody that would line up in agreement with him so that he could demolish the thing that had been a hindrance. The Bible says that Jericho had been straightly shut up. None went out, none went in. Nothing changed in that whole region for a long time. The walls were so thick they could ride chariots on them. It's like they were on the freeway. They did not open up the gates for people to exit. They did not open up the gates for people to enter. This type of fortitude only shows up when there is some type of principality or power that rests over it. Most people have not been able to get out of certain things because there's an angel, that, uh, an, not an angel, but an agent of hell that oversees everything that's blocked up. And whenever I see people's minds blocked up, I'm trying to figure out what agent of hell has them blocked up in their thinking that they can't think out of the place that they're in. Because if they can think out of it, they can get out of it. But if you don't ever think out of it, you never get out of it. So there's an agent of hell and we don't know exactly what it is, but we do know that when Joshua arrived to those walls, there was a commander of the army of the Lord standing there and he did not come to fight a physical battle. He came to fight a spiritual battle and don't get it mixed up. He was not a physical man. He was a spiritual man. He was the spirit of God. If you do enough research, you trace, you can trace it down all in, all the way into Jesus Christ. So they thought that it was Jesus Christ standing there with his sword drawn ready to fight against whatever had been holding Jericho straightly shut up so while while he's standing there Joshua has enough spiritual understanding because he had a mentor it is not going to be my first thought that he's here for me so he asked a question are you for me or are you against me are you for our adversaries? Who you here for? Because I can't assume because I'm a believer, I'm an Israelite, I'm a Hebrew, that you're going to fight for me. Because I had a mentor and my mentor showed me that every time I go into something, it doesn't mean that God's on my side unless I'm on God's side. I've done enough in my lifetime. I've done things that God was not a part of. And I paid the price. How are you going to get victory in God's dust having anything to do with what you've done? So now this scenario is playing out. So in my mind, I said, okay, if you need someone with that level of rank, what kind of rank is holding Jericho back? Anytime God sends that type of rank against an enemy. There's another higher ranking enemy that's holding those people in captivity. You got to under, you understand your rank. You may be able to pray a headache away, but can you pray cancer away? You may be able to pray in the, in the Sunday school class and get a breakthrough, but can you get a breakthrough in the auditorium? You may be able to pray over your house, but can you pray over the city and the people go free? This is a city issue. This ain't no home issue. Just because you can handle your bills doesn't mean you can handle the bills of the city. People get make it mistaken all the time. They think because they can handle their house, they can handle this house. That's totally two different things. You don't understand your rank. 
So Joshua looks over at someone who has much higher rank. So in his mind, he's thinking like I'm thinking. If that kind of rank shows up, there has to be a higher ranking that's holding these people up. So I begin to process all that and I begin to study all that. And every thought that I have, I can prove it to you in my Logos Bible study that it begins to line up. So I'm going to give you my first point. The commander of the Lord's army was ready to wage war against the ungodly nation. When I say ungodly, I'm talking about a belief. I'm talking about a spirit ruling over that nation. You say they, they're bad. They're not bad. They're just hostages of what is really bad. Let me help you real quick because you're calling them by the influence that's over that city or over that region. When you don't know as the real church, you're their liberation. If you were really touching the principalities and powers, they would go free. Most of the people who are part of Refresh were not swap church folks. Many of them came to this house, don't know much about church at all. You notice that when we start praising, many of them don't dance. They just start hopping. They do the best they know. Many of them didn't come from a trained leadership in the church. Because when you really break heaven open, you don't get somebody else's church leaders. When you really break, uh, when you really break heaven open, you start getting Ray Ray and Johnny and Cliff, you know, all your cousins and nephews and nieces. You start growing, you started pulling those type of people in because when you break through, you get the loss. You don't get the found. So he's ready. He's got his sword drawn. He's ready to wage war against the thing. That's had everybody locked up. I, I kind of wonder why church people want to free the free. No disrespect. If, you, if you're really solid and you're a really solid believer, I don't know why they invited you here. Because you're not bound. You're the sweetest person that anybody could ever meet. I want those radic radical folks. Those raggedy folks. Those, those I, I just got high. I still smell like weed. I got a fifth in my car. Joshua recognizes the commander of the Lord's army and his posture. He, he recognizes it. This is what I like about him because people, most people don't watch posture. You can tell his maturity because he watches the posture. See, most people, they, they say you're upset. My posture doesn't say I'm upset. Sasha watches my posture. You want to know when I'm upset, you ask Sasha because she knows the posture of an upset daddy. So he's, he's wise enough that he knows the posture of, of the commander of the army of the Lord. He's got his sword drawn. It wasn't normal for the sword to be drawn unless you're ready to go into battle against something. Some things God is fed up with, but you're not fed up with it. You think God's okay with all these young people dying? You think God's okay with that? God's not okay with that. You think God's okay with the, these young girls being turned out? And you know, God's not okay with that. So God is ready and he has his sword drawn because he wants to make sure he liberates them before your child becomes them. I know you think you're doing good parenting, but you take them to school. You drop them off at the school. You let them ride the bus to school. Who do you think that they're interacting with when you're not there? I know you think you're a good teacher. And I know they say yes ma'am and no sir at home. So his sword drawn. It's, it's a posture saying. Hey Jericho. Your time is up. He said the spirit that operates over Jericho. Your time is up. 
The thing that's been keeping Jericho shut up. If the time has come to a close. Are you sensitive enough? Or do you want a title so bad you don't know when God is saying somebody's time is up or something time is up? I believe much of what we're dealing with in this city. I believe the Lord has his sword drawn. And he said the time is up. The theft, the time is up. The premature death, time is up. Gun violence, time is up. He's saying time is up to a whole lot of stuff. But we too busy trying to get a title that we don't realize his posture is this say that the time is up. We're tired of all these mothers bearing these sons. The time is up. All these other siblings having to deal with grief the way they're dealing with grief because somebody doesn't realize the time is up. Whenever the Lord draws his sword is a sign that the time is up. And Joshua understood that the Lord's sword was drawn so the time was up. I don't know whose side you're on but I know somebody's time is up. It was all in his posture. In his posture, uh, this victorious warfare would release the people from the influence of their their region. Listen to this: to serve the living God. Let me tell you why people don't serve God. Because the region is bound. Every region has a certain way of thinking. I travel to different places and every place I go to, I notice that the people think differently. How do you know they think differently? Because they act differently. Wherever people act differently, it's because they're thinking differently. People function based on the way they think. People who don't steal, it's because they don't think about stealing. People who don't lie, they, it's because they don't think about lying. But it's hard to get a person to not lie when all they think about is lying. People respond from the overflow of their emotions and what they're going through and what they're experiencing. You say, well, they're not angry. Well, they just kick down the door and cuss somebody out. So that tells me that they're angry. Something's going on inside of their heads. And when there are multiple people operating like that, there's something ruling over that particular reason, region that nobody is addressing. You just said, there's a bad boy. They need to go to jail. How many are you going to incarcerate that you could have got delivered if you would have uh, attacked the right thing? I remember years ago, back in my earlier days, and, and I wasn't even 30 years old, and I partnered with a friend, and we went to uh, Draper Prison, and I was so surprised when I went into Draper Prison. Uh, I went they, we went through the doors, and they let us in. I said, man, it's not that bad. Then they shut the door, and I said, this is bad. Then we went through another door, and they shut that door. I was like, this is really bad. Then we went through a third door, and they shut that door. And then I looked around on both sides all the way down the hallway. I said, this is where all of our African American people are. I'd never seen that number of African American people behind bars. I was shocked. I was shocked. And, and, and that told me there is something happening that we got to come up with a solution for. And so I was a manager at a company and there was this guy that was working under me because I ran into this guy that was extremely talented. He was extremely talented. Boy, could sing. He could sing. He could play the, uh, the organ. But he was playing in prison. So I was talking to a guy uh, that, that was under me, uh, and uh, we were talking about, I was telling him where I went. He said, yeah, that's where my brother is. I said, that's where your brother is? He said, yeah, my brother was about to sign a contract for singing, a record deal, and he got in some trouble, and he went to jail. And the person he described was the person I saw leading praise and worship. And I'm, I said to him, I think that was your brother leading praise and worship from behind bars. Okay. Just, just telling you, there, there's some things that are going on. And all those guys that were in there, you want to know why they were in there? Because they thought a certain way. The way they thought would not allow them to remain free. You change the way they think, you can free the person. You can't change your thinking 
until you address what they don't have the will to overcome. And let me let me let me let me help some of you men who want to, you know, these guys are sitting on the platform. Let me tell you the best place to do to go. Get you some some license and go to the prison. See if you built for real ministry. No disrespect. See if you built for real ministry. Because that's where people like us need you. All right. right. So this, this, this victorious warfare will release the people from the influence of their region. Where was their region? Jericho. The Bible said Jericho was straightly shut up. None went out. None went in. Nothing changed. A good child started out. As a good child grew, the good child went down the same path of the other person. Why? Because that was part of how the region operated. There were, no, there were not many options. Every now and then, somebody got a good coach that directed them. But one out of a hundred, those are not good odds. So these people could live free. If the influence of the region was broken off of them. Now I want to go deeper because I want to prove my point. Many of you are not real spiritual. The ones who are spiritual or emotionally damaged. Because they're overboard. How can you be that spiritual and not know who I am? I'm just clear. If you don't know who I am and you that spiritual, you need to, you need to shut that stuff down. Because God should have told you who I am and what I mean by what I say. Now, let's, let's, stay, let's, let's move in this. There was, there was a force outside of Jericho, which meant there had to be some force equal in authority and rank inside. Because you never send a weaker or a stronger. God is a good steward. God is not going to take uh, the, the commander of the army of the Lord and put him up against a man. He will put him up against an un unseen force that has full control for those of you who only believe what you can see what you don't see is what's getting the advantage of you so let's talk just a little bit more and I'm going to talk to you about the strong man this particular uh, commander of the armor of the Lord he was considered a strong man but then there's also a strong man Read your Bible. There's a strong man over Jericho. Listen to this. The strong man, as commander of the Lord's army, had to open up what the strong man over Jericho had shut up. You have to have equal or somewhat equal in rank to address what's equal in rank. You can't just take anybody. We want just anybody to pray. We want just anybody to speak. Some people can say more than I say, but can't get the results I get. It's a difference in the rank. It's all a difference in the rank. So listen to this. Matthew 12, verse 29 and verse 30. To prove it to you, Jesus is saying this. I need you to walk with me. Because some of y'all, something going to break over your life. It's 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 going to break over your life. So Matthew 12 verse 29 and 30 it reads this way. Uh, how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first bind the strong man and then he will plunder his house? He who is not with me is against me. See, Joshua's got to find out, Lord, I know who you are. Oh, you're, on my, you're on my side. You're on my adversary's side. Who, whose side are you on? Let's read on. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. So in this portion of scripture, Jesus is saying to them and explaining to them, in order for you to go in and you plunder the goods the goods the family what what do we do when it when david had come back from uh to back to ziklag they had they had burned his houses and took all of his stuff you know some of you said well the devil didn't take my children something's got your children 
You know, if they if they not worshiping God, something got your children. You well, I, they did uh, no. Something's got your children. Something's got your grandchildren. But the only way you can get them back is that you break the back of the force that drove them out. You're, you're constantly complaining about them instead of asking God, what is this thing that has gained influence over my child, my DNA? Can I help you all? Okay, you say, bind the strong men. Uh, many, many of Sasha's issues are, are the results of the weaknesses of her mom and dad in their marriage. I always encourage people, when you got children, don't fight and quarrel against one another. You open up a door. The devil may not come after you, but he'll go after your children. Because, uh, uh, listen, the, in, in order to get and spoil and plunder the house, he has to divide myself and Lady Davis. Now we've been closing doors. Why? Because we opened a door. And that's why you got to get your little old self together. Because you may live upright and be disciplined, but your, your sons and your daughters are going to make you look like a fool in the streets. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So unless you, you bind the strong man. Now, how, how do we, we bind that strong man? He's saying to Joshua, if you think about it, Joshua, you can't go in and you can't get victory over Jericho until we bind the spirit that operates over Jericho. What's influencing Jericho? What flees Jericho? Anytime something negative exists, you got to ask yourself, what's feeding that thing? Something has to feed that thing. Nothing can stay strong unless you feed that thing. If you want to get rid of something in your life, stop feeding that thing. Whatever you're feeding, that thing that if you feed it with negative thinking if you feed it with people around you that shouldn't be around you if you feed it you're always feeding it and you want to be up and you want to not be depressed but you're feeding that thing and if you keep feeding it it's going to keep you down it's going to keep you in that shape so we have to find out what's feeding Jericho what is feeding Jericho what type of information it's going into Jericho that these people are shut up. Because if you can cut it off, I'm going to be cutting off a whole lot of stuff at this beginning of this 2024. Messing with my staff. Messing with my leaders. Messing with my atmosphere. Messing with my church. I'm going to cut it off. If they can't stop feeding it, I'm going to cut them off. We ain't let nothing live that keeps feeding the, the negativity and the plan of Satan and messing up the atmosphere when God's ready to come down and sit down in your life and do signs, wonders, and miracles. We're going to cut it off. Somebody say, cut it off. So this, 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 this strong man that we can't identify yet, but we know the strong man that God has sent. Somebody needs to understand you are not alone. If it's God's time, you are not alone. You can look up here. I don't have to have these three men up here. I am not alone. The reason I'm bold, I am not alone. The reason you're scared, because you don't know that the Lord is with you. I have never been alone. I never will be alone. So the commander of the Lord's army is standing there. Joshua recognizes him. I got to figure out, did you come to stop me from invading them? Or did you come to take them out so we can invade them? What did you come? Did you come for the city to consume us? Or did you come for us to influence the city? You got to ask yourself those type of questions. Because if you don't ask yourself those type of questions, you won't know why you exist. Well, I believe refresh exists not to be consumed and subdued by the things of the city, but to influence the city. So 
Stay with me. So now that we know one of the strong men, which is a good one, the one sent from God, we got to figure out who the other one is. Now, let me verify my case for those of you who don't know your Bible very well, but I can teach you if you just listen. Notice that Joshua and his people plundered Jericho because he, Joshua, humbled himself. You can never plunder an adversary with pride and arrogancy. You got to humble yourself. You got to put down all that stuff you depend on and that you believe in and say, here I am, Lord. Send me, I'll go. So Joshua and the people plundered Jericho because he humbled himself and followed the instructions that were given to him. The instructions, you go march around that wall. Don't you say anything till you go the seventh time. That's why it's so important to teach yourself and the people around you. Be quiet until it's time to speak. Some people are very mouthy, but being mouthy shows your ignorance. Because you should never be forward in your speech when you don't have proper information concerning your surroundings. You should sit and learn the language or you will prove that you're not bilingual when you open up your mouth. So he humbles himself. He follows the instructions because he understands he's facing something. You're facing something, people. What you're facing is, is much higher than what you, you think it is. The sickness that you're dealing with is something much higher than what you think you're dealing with. Because if you see that many patterns of it and it starts to find the similarities, it's a similar enemy. Colossians 2 verse 15. Colossians 2 and verse 15. I ask myself, why does this type of devil keep coming? Why does this type of devil want to stop me? Why does this type of devil want to try to, 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 to demoralize my integrity? Why does this type of devil keep coming to try to use people that I trusted but didn't trust me? The problem is not that I didn't trust them. The problem is they didn't trust me. So in Colossians 2 verse 15 out of the New Living Translation. In this way, he talking about Jesus disarmed the spiritual rulers and authority. He, he shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Listen. Many of you, the devil wants to shame you publicly because you're supposed to shame him publicly. These are, are forces and rulership over regions. Get it now. They'll let you be the mayor. They'll let you be the chef. But why do they still sit in these seats and have meetings and guide everything that's going on? They'll let you be the supervisor. They'll let you be the foreman. But why don't you call me to that executive table? Ah, let me back up off of that. There's, there's, there's this, this force. And you calling it white. And you calling it black. And you calling it yellow. And you calling it red. There's this force. This rulership of authority. That hovers over regions to, to, to dictate what happens in those regions. If, if you ever, if you ever start coming out of the mindset of the region, not only will, will you feel the negativity, that spirit will hire people just like you to attack you because that is the spirit of the region. And you want to know why you go through battles. It's because you will uh, allow your mind to get above what's normal for the region. And when your mind gets above what's normal for the region, there's a, a signal sent to those who are in the region. Uh, they ain't nothing who they think they are why they think they can talk like that why they think they can go there and that that won't come but it has enough influence among you that an attack will or uh, an assault against your life will cause you to feel like you can't go on I never get upset and bitter with people 
The Bible says, an idle mind is a devil works. No, no, that's what people came up with. It don't read that way. But it's so true. When people don't have enough to think about, they think about taking you out. So Jesus disarmed it. The growth of this church has been the result of disarming principalities and powers. We disarmed. We were intentional. I knew what to address. I can read anything. I can discern anything. They can say, well, I think he missing. No, I think you missing it. I think you're in denial because I hit it on the spot. I know exactly what it is because this is what I do. Because I'm not going to waste my life battling something that's not an enemy. So this thing creates patterns and creates ways of thinking, creates ways of operating. And you can see the trends. Anything, anytime something starts rising, all of a sudden uh, this, this, this influence comes. And all of a sudden some conflict breaks out in the praise and worship. And conflict breaks out in the ushers and the greeters. Conflict breaks out with the deacons. And conflict breaks out with the elders. And all of a sudden this sister got this problem and that sister got that problem. Because all of those spirits, when they see so much productivity about to happen and some people ain't got enough in their minds and they find themselves in places where there is no Jesus in the cockpit of their mind so when if Jesus is not driving and if Jesus is not the pilot and then therefore there's an open seat for the adversary and I chose to never have two seats in my mind So they, they started they started working and they're fueled they're fueled by the region that's why it's hard to stop it so if you cut this one off it comes over there you cut that one off it comes over there because it's fueled by the region because nobody has enough nerve to reach up to heaven and say here it is you spirit of division you spirit of decisiveness you spirit that comes from the best of hell we decree and declare that refresh family church as off limits to you you can't have their minds you won't work people against the singular leadership of this church that may be on the west side but it can't happen on the east side they say they say they want to pray like me but they ain't never heard me pray so Jesus disarmed them humiliated principalities and powers over that region everything that said we couldn't we do that's how you humiliate the devil every everything that said we were wrong prove that you're right by just walking out what God told you right is doing what God said not what you say it's doing what God said that's right Now we we labeling all of these people because we don't have the power in the heavenlies to deliver them. And we, we get jealous of people that when they open up their mouths, things start shifting. And we're trying to sit there. How do they do that? How do they do that? They went somewhere you have not gone. Those forces don't open and don't yield unless God has developed something in you that everybody on your road doesn't have. Are y'all still with me? Can I keep on teaching? Some of y'all going to go home and tell the devil that you have identified as mental illness is in your house. Won't you go home and tell that spirit of mental illness in your house that your house is off limits. Tell your house it is the house of Bethel. Angels are ascending and descending. You got to cut that devil off. The devil realized if God could ascend and descend, he thinks he can ascend and descend. When he was talking to Job, he said he was walking to and fro. You got to put an eviction notice there and told him this is her last time coming on my front doorstep sitting in my living room cooking your dinner in my kitchen see they don't know they don't know I don't play about this church 
They don't know. They don't know. Lady Davis understands. I don't play about this church because I'm going to heaven or hell about this church. I don't play about this church. This is God's house. I ain't doing it your way. You going back to your corporation. I ain't doing it God's way. I'm serious about this house. The souls of this house and the streamers who stream in. I'm going to have to stand before God one day and I won't have a board. I won't have any other people standing with me. I got to stand there by myself. And if I got to stand my, by myself, I'm going to always keep my rod out and say I don't care what it is that comes against this house I'm not going to allow it let me go deeper can I go deeper are y'all okay in the balcony are y'all okay in this side of the balcony is anybody getting a revelation flesh and blood is not your enemy if you're fighting people you're losing Book of Daniel chapter 10. Book of Daniel chapter 10. You deplete yourself of the power to operate when you focus in your energy on somebody that's got a look on their face. After you break that thing, that hostage is going free. I've seen so many people, they act like they don't know they were trying to stop me and they were doing me wrong. All of a sudden, things clear up. I'm like, why didn't you get it cleared up before I made my decision? The book of Daniel chapter 10. Verse 12. Daniel's prayed 21 days. Daniel's working on, waiting on an answer. He's waiting on a response. Verse 12. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand, you got to want to understand. Well, I just don't understand. Well, do you want to understand? And to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard the very first day. And I have come because of your words. What you said is what brought me here. Verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. I was fighting this thing in the atmosphere for 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the what chief one of the chief princes came to help me. This is to tell you there was something going on over Jericho. And it was so powerful. It needed the commander of the army of the Lord to come. He came to help me. For I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Said so I was in a battle. I heard you the first day you prayed. Some of y'all who've given up on your prayers. There's been a battle in the heavens that nobody will say anything about. There's been something going on over you trying to hinder God's blessings from getting to you. Daniel, and listen to me. I, I, I heard you. I heard you the first day you prayed. But I needed some help from another archangel. Because this, this, these kings of Persia, they, they were so mighty and so strong and so divisive that, that it, it, it was held up. But when Michael got there, all of a sudden, I got a breakthrough. I came to tell somebody that's been waiting on a breakthrough. You may not understand what I'm preaching, but you will understand your breakthrough. That thing wouldn't break, Sasha. For 21 days, that thing wouldn't break. He's praying and he's fasting and that thing wouldn't break. There's a lot of stuff that's been going on in this city, at your house, in you, that didn't seem like it'll break. It's because you didn't understand. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. And what you got to do is open up your mouth and decree and declare before the Lord. I know that you're on my side. I know that you're fighting for me. You got to start learning how to praise. Too many 
have y'all a quiet during praise time. When you praise, what you do is you ignite Michael and you ignite Gabriel. That's why I don't like silent Christians. Silent Christians are bound Christians. Psychologically, people who are quiet internalize more stuff, which means they become more demonic in their thinking because they never express themselves. When we give you an opportunity to praise, what you're doing is you're getting a release. You're opening up your mouth. You're opening up your spirit. You're saying to the devil, I know you want me bound, but when I open up my mouth, I free my own atmosphere. I free my own mind. I free my own household. How, how can you be so free, poor, and so bound rich? Because you get silent from the time that you matriculate from poverty. But you don't know that you need a greater shout when you're rich than you did when you were poor. God was trying to teach you why you were poor. How to use your vocal cords. Get a breakthrough. Now he's teaching you why you got assets. How to keep your assets with a shout. Can I have more time? So this thing, I'm always conscious of this thing. Whenever I'm going to preach, I'm always sensitive. And I'm really rearranging my, the, the, the group, the team that works around me. Because I need greater sensitivity to read what's going on in, in, in that environment. I have to have the right missiles to help me to navigate through all the dilemmas that are going on in that atmosphere. I don't need a missile that don't like me playing for me. That's like putting a, a weapon in the hands and they're pointing in my back. And I'm out there preaching and they're trying to tell me down in the back they're trying to tear me down in the front and they're trying to tear me down over me so i have to have a missile that knows how to navigate through the stony places and you wonder why i changed out because one wasn't with me i had to find me somebody that knew how to flow with me so i can navigate through so i can open up heaven so you are not in despair to you you just, you don't understand. You just want somebody that sings well. You just want somebody that plays well. But if they can't do anything in the atmosphere, they just a good psalmist. They just a good musician. But you got to have somebody that when they hit those keys, stuff begins to happen. You got to have a daughter like my daughter. When she hit those songs, you feel the atmosphere shift. You got to have those for all those strings that when they hit a note, all of a sudden it sweeps through the atmosphere you ain't got time Jonathan to see if your armor bearer is behind you if I gotta look back to see that won't be but one time What is it that has Jericho all bound up? I started to ask myself while I was studying, while I was studying, I said, Lord, I know the commander of the Lord's army was there and he was a strong man. I said, what was the strong man of Jericho? So I'm going through all my commentaries and I'm trying to find things. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit asked me, he said, who got delivered out of all Jericho? I said, Lord, I know my Bible. There was a there was a hole. Excuse me if I don't use the other language. There was a hole in her family. That the only, they were the only ones. I know, Lady Davis, I just gotta say it like this because I'm gonna break that spirit of whoredom over this region. 
it, 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 it was it was the hole. The hole in her and her father and in her household are the only ones that came out of Jericho. So I said, God, if, if, if she was a if she was a, a, a prostitute, then I gotta look up and I gotta find out more about the prostitute. So in that region, uh, the prostitution was legal, which means if you look into prostitution, you see sexual sins and then you see uh, pornography and you start to see those type of things. So, so that was ruling over Jericho. And anytime anybody wants to take a spiritual leader down, they come at them through the sexual orientation to try to bring them down. Y'all know what I'm talking about up in here. They usually try to connect them for, for with sexual misconduct because they ain't nothing but people who are subject to prostitution spirit that's over Jericho. I don't know why that would be their first thought and because it was your first thought it's because you're submitted to that same spirit. Somebody shout in the house. But, but I, I don't know why they didn't get to lead deacon and associate pastor. I don't know why that priest didn't come out. I'm sure they had a priest. Every 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 town had a priest. Every city had a priest. But it wasn't the priest. It was a girl in the red light district that made it out because God made sure that anybody that will work with the men of God, I'm going to make sure they don't go down with the collapse of everything else. Some of y'all better get a revelation in here. Why are you trying to expose something? You better be covering something because if you don't cover it well you go down with the house i know we ain't got a whole lot of claps you go ahead and go down i'm going up baby so so, so they take this they take this this woman this woman of the night this 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 this, this woman that's got all these secrets this woman that's making money using her body this woman that's using sexual acts and probably got a whole team of people with her but this woman when these 12 spies came in she knew well enough with her jacked up self these are men of God so I'm going to hide them I know the city wants to kill them I know I know a Facebook wants to kill them I know Instagram and YouTube want to kill them but I'm gonna cover them I'm gonna hide them from all the religiosity that all the talk in the parking lot all the talk in the barbershop all the talk at the hair salon all the talk at other churches I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hide I'm gonna hide there ain't it bad that a prostitute has more discernment than an elder <laughs> so you gotta be careful when you're trying to class, put people in certain classes. Some of y'all ain't halfway out of your stuff yet. And then you're trying to judge somebody about your stuff, about their stuff. You you know you ain't completely out. Yeah, let have a bad day and see if you don't sniff again. Maybe I should say snort again. Have, have a bad day and see if you don't have a tendency to gravitate towards what you say you left. So, so this, this particular girl and her family qualifies to come out. Out of all the people, I'm saying this is a trip. Out of all the people, the harlot and her family gets a VIP. Everybody was trying to get a front seat. Everybody was trying to get special parking. Everybody was showing up early and then they see the woman walking with the colors that represented what she was doing. Walk right by them while everything's falling apart in their lives. When those walls started coming down, she wasn't in there. When those walls started coming down, her house wasn't in the wall. She, was, she had been relocated. 
I don't know if you know who going to be blessed. But you don't need to count anybody sitting around you out. Because somebody believes I'm the one in spite of what I've been through. In spite of what's been going on. This is my time to be nice to somebody that can get me out of this mess. My last point. I got to go. I got to go. My last point. I got to go. Now this woman, you think all she done was got out. Because you stopped reading your Bible too early. You thought, you thought she just escaped the disaster. Once the spirit of over Jericho, the spirit of prostitution, the spirit of, of porn and all those perversions. Once, once it was broken, this same girl, now y'all stay with me here. Y'all stay with me here. Y'all stay with me here. Don't think I'm preaching at you. I'm not preaching at you. It's y'all some good folks. I said y'all some good folks. Y'all some real good folks. That's your problem. It's hard for me to attack the strong man because you you embracing the strong man. You got to remember you got a weakness that you don't want. I may be weak, but I don't want it. I may have some stuff going on, but I'm not embracing it. I may, I may be struggling real bad, but it's not who I am. Never identify yourself with a struggle. I can tell she didn't identify herself with a struggle. I can tell she didn't identify herself with her occupation. In Joshua chapter 6 verse 25, I want to show you what happened next. Done. She makes it out. But not only does she make it out. I want to tell a whole lot of you. In 2024, when that thing breaks, you're not going to just get out. God has a prophetic place already set for you. Somebody better receive that and snatch it out of the atmosphere. Joshua 6 verse 25. And Joshua spared Rahab. The harlot. In my notes, I, I had written, oh, and Lady Davis told me to take it out. Rahab the harlot. Her father's household. And all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day. Because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? The prostitute gets out. The prostitute. You know the one you distance yourself from. You, 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 you know the one you said you were too good to hang out with. You, you, you know the one that you tried to use scripture against. You, you know the one you and your girlfriends talked about. You know, you and your brothers, you know, y'all hung out together. Y'all, this is what's really going on. You know, it was the very one that everybody had had a conversation with. They got the VIP with Israel. That's something to think about, ain't it? Mr. Holier Than Thou. <laughs> Miss Super Christian, I pray in the spirit three times a day. And you mean in all those three times God ain't told you who I am? But not only this, not only this, it's one thing to get out. It's another thing to now live in Israel, which means you're no longer in the behavior that you were in while you were living in Jericho. Which means that since you're no longer in that behavior, God's got a bonus for you. See, some of y'all don't know my message is about the bonus because when we break it with this shout, 
no shout yet but when we break it with this shout something's going to happen something's going to shake not just in the house something's going to shake in the region because some of y'all you've been without what God promised you because there's been something blocking it but when we shout this last time it's going to break and I think you're going to get more than what you've been asking for so the girl catch this the girl who was a harlot which who was a hoe is now with Israel God's people and now that she's living and, and from now on she's still there her bloodline is still there yeah her bloodline is still there to this day you want to know how I know it's because if you track her lineage all of a sudden a man of God came by that did not see a harlot in her that did not see a prostitute in her did not see her as a aka hope and married her a man of God <laughs> married her and when he married her he 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 now joined to her and now godly seed that was in him has to pass through her and when the godly seed passes through her it creates a king in her so this king that has been prophesied that will come his name is King David and his great great grandmother was a prostitute Y'all didn't, didn't shout enough on that. King David. Great, great grandmama. Was a prostitute. And you think your little old issues can't get. You think your little old issues can't get you. I done messed some folks up. Lady Davis, go to Matthew chapter 1. He thought you were all that on a bag of chips. I don't do anything anymore. I don't hang out. I don't club. I don't drink. I don't sleep around. I don't do that. You're not impressive. Your resume is not impressive. It's when God can take a hoe and turn them into a queen. That's impressive. When God can take the weak and make them strong, that's impressive. When God can take the poor and make them rich, that's impressive. When God can take the wino and make them a preacher that preaches all around the world, that's impressive. Fine, fine, Rahab. Fine, fine, fine. Salmon, get your mic. Get your mic. You got it? You got it. Huh? Yeah, the genealogy. What most people don't read. I read the genealogy because I need to know who my cousins are. Since I can't trace back no, more, no further than my grandfather, I need to be able to trace back to see who I really am. You got your mic? Just, just that one verse. Salmon begot Boaz. Read slow. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Wait, whoa, whoa. Now we've been preaching Ruth and Boaz for a while. So you say a whole was Boaz's mama? Yes. Girl, you a wild woman. You got you right where you need to be. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Read, read that again. Salmon begat Boaz by Sim, Rahab. Simon, which Simon? Who is a man of God? Go ahead. Salmon begat Boaz by Rahab. Okay. Go ahead. Boaz begat Obed by Ruth. Uh -huh. Obed begat Jesse. Uh huh. And Jesse begat David the king. 
Oh, y'all ain't been to church. Y'all ain't been to church. Y'all need to go back from scratch. All that craziness y'all been learning in church, you ought to be in here every time you can so we can teach you what to expect about yourself. Because some of y'all have counted yourself out thinking that God can't take a mess and turn it into a miracle. On the count of three, something's going to break over Birmingham. You want to know why? Because God can take a mess and make a miracle out of it. One, two, three. those doors right now. Just open up those doors right now. Something's dropping in this house. And it's going to flow from the pulpit to the parkway. Down the parkway. Down into 59. Down over into 450. Into 31. I got to go, y'all. Until you find somebody that believes and teaches the word of God, you will sit in a place that God never intended for you. I hope you got sanitizer. Slap somebody a high five. Tell them, I'm the one. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he do it? I'm telling you, God will, God will, God will, God will, God will, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, God will do it. If you trust him, God will do it. If you believe in him, God will do it. If you rely on him, he will do it. I feel a breakthrough. I feel a turnover. I believe that the heavens are open over your life. I dare you to shout like it's yours. Might as well hate on you because they ain't gonna ever be able to stop you. Look at somebody, tell them I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Look, they were gonna stop me. They were gonna stop me a long time ago. Tim, I'm unstoppable. Say this with me three times. I am the one. I am the one. I am the one. Release one more praise. 